As Aditha Karagalan's funeral procession moved along the Kaveri River towards Tanjavur, the procession was attended by lakhs of Chola people. Admiration of soldiers was widespread in Tamil Nadu in those days. The Chola clan faded for some time in between. Didn't we see Vijayalaya making a comeback from the Chola era? For a hundred years each born in that clan surpassed the other in heroic fame. Vijayalaya's son Adithavarman destroyed the fame of the Pallava clan and conquered Thande country. His son Parantaka Chakraborty subjugated the whole of southern India including Madurai and Elam. All the four sons of Parantaka emperor surpassed each other in valour. One of them died in the Pandian War. The eldest son, Rajadathan, he waged a war in Thakolong with the great army of the double zone Khanera god who raged like an ocean, and after defeating Amapuram's army, he was killed by treachery on the battlefield and became the elephant beating god. Even though Kandaratatha was a sage of Shiva, he was not lacking in bravery. Later, during the reign of Sundarashola, the son of Aranjaya, who conquered the river, the fame of the Chola Empire, which had faded a little after the Takola War, became magnanimous again. The unanimous voice of the people could be heard everywhere that Aditha Karikalan had no equal and no superiority among those born in heroic lineage. Didn't the heroic deeds he performed in the battlefield of Siva at the age of twelve eclipsed the fame of Arjuna's son Abhimanyu? There were many rumours circulating about the reason why such a brave warrior had not come to Tanjore for some years and stayed in Kanchi. It is a rumour that the Kyratharas are scheming to keep Aditha Karikalan from coming to Tanjore with the intention of crowning Madhurandha. That once upon a time, Aditha Karikalan of the same name had vowed to do the same thing as Karikala Vallavan had invaded the north and planted the tiger flag on the top of the Himalayas. Therefore, it is needless to say how the internal revolt of the Chola people would have been when the news spread that suddenly one day Aditha Karikalan had died and was killed by fraud in Sambuvarayar's mansion? Is it not surprising that people gathered in locks to pay their last respects to that brave man? As the procession approached Tanjore, the crowd became a sea of people. The people of Tanjore and the soldiers of the southern army who surrounded the Tanjore fort joined the crowd. After Prime Minister Anurudha warned that if they were all allowed inside the fort, the Emperor and his family, drowning in a sea of grief, arrived outside the fort. On seeing Sundara Chola, there was an uproar in that huge crowd. When the Chola government conquered the Chola country, not a single ha was heard, says the Sila Sasanas. Aditya Karakalar's living conditions before his death are recorded in the Akila Sasanas. Today's ha. Ha. Ouch. The sounds were raised in millions of voices. The memory of Arjuna who gave away Abhimanyu came to many people. But Abhimanyu stood alone in the midst of the hostile crowd and died after performing the Asakaya Surathanas. It was here that Aditha Karikalan was killed due to the machinations of Madhurinthagan and the lust for power of the petty kings. Things happened outside to confirm this idea that was living in the minds of the people. Aditha Karakalan's dead body was kept outside the Tanjore fort for all to see. Everyone came and left in tears. But Madhurand Hakkar did not come alone, the vandals did not come. Rumours had also started spreading that the Palyavatarais were getting their friends together with the Sanyams. So even after Aditha Karakalar was given heroic death rites and the emperor's family entered the Tanjore fort, the crowd did not disperse quickly. Fall the drunkard! Down with the tyrants. The chants of were raised lightly at first. Over time, these slogans gained strength. Suddenly, a section of the crowd broke open the fort gates and entered the city of Tanjore. First they went to the mansion of the reapers. They stood outside and shouted down with the scumbags. On the orders of Prime Minister Anuradhar, the soldiers of Vilakara had to disperse the people. Meanwhile, a rumour spread that Madhurinthak was hiding in Anuradha's house. People went and surrounded Anuradha's house. Where is that Paddy Madhurinthagan? Tell Madhurinthagan to come out. They shouted. At that time Madhurintha was indeed in Anuradha's house. Hearing the cries of the people outside, he shuddered. Looking at Anuradha, he said, Prime Minister. Send me out of the fort somehow. Send me through the secret tunnel. 
I will go and join my friends who support me. If you do this, I will keep you as Prime Minister when I ascend the Chola throne. Sir! Why talk now about ascending the throne? The Sundara Chola Emperor is still alive, said Prime Minister Anuradha. Didn't you see Sundara Chola coming back after lending his son alone? Didn't you notice how haunted his face was? I was watching from this mace platform. He won't be alive for much longer. Oh Aralmas Hivarman, I must mount the throne and rule this kingdom. Sundara Chola gives me the title. Katava is loved. Why should you and mother stand in the way of that? Said Madhurand Hagen. Prince. Will there be no reason to stand against their mother? Ask me. Is it enough if Sundara Chola likes the clamor of the people surrounding this house? Shouldn't the people of Chola like it? And said, Aha! What is this? Anuradhar looked out into the street. Instead of the old cry, Long live the merciful! Long live Bonnie's Selver! Long live the heroic warrior! There were slogans. Aromas Hivarma was coming there mounted on a majestic horse. All the people followed him. For a few minutes, the outside of Anuradha's house became empty. Even before Anuradha, Madhurandha was watching the scene. His eyes were red like guava with the fire of jealousy. Aha! What is so charming about this child? He thought to himself. Anuradha said, Prince. What was the reason why you were in that underground tunnel when the little bastards were running after the killer of the king of Elam? He asked. Why should I come out if the great sign is ready? Let them come here and defeat the Khajumbalar forces and put me on the throne. I said. The man said, Prince. Not only that, there is a terrible mystery about their birth. No one else would dare tell you that. I will say he said. Then come. I said let's go right away. He replied, I have a message to tell Prime Minister Anuradhar. I have said that. You go first and hide in the tunnel, he said. I then went into the treasure dungeon and waited. Prime Minister. Did he come and see them? What could be the terrible mystery of my birth, said Madhurand Hagen. Not only that, there is a terrible mystery about their birth. No one else would dare tell you that. I will say he said. Then come. I said let's go right away. He replied, I have a message to tell Prime Minister Anuradhar. I have said that. You go first and hide in the tunnel, he said. I then went into the treasure dungeon and waited. Prime Minister. Did he come and see them? What could be the terrible mystery of my birth, said Madhurand Hagen. Not only that, there is a terrible mystery about their birth. No one else would dare tell you that. I will say he said. Then come. I said let's go right away. He replied, I have a message to tell Prime Minister Anuradhar. I have said that. You go first and hide in the tunnel he said. I then went into the treasure dungeon and waited. Prime Minister. Did he come and see them? What could be the terrible mystery of my birth, said Madhurand Hagen. Prime Minister Anuradhar has a message to convey. I have said that. You go first and hide in the tunnel, he said. I then went into the treasure dungeon and waited. Prime Minister. Did he come and see them? What could be the terrible mystery of my birth, said Madhurand Hagen. Prime Minister Anuradhar has a message to convey. I have said that. You go first and hide in the tunnel, he said. I then went into the treasure dungeon and waited. Prime Minister. Did he come and see them? What could be the terrible mystery of my birth, said Madhurand Hagen. Prince. The one who has the right to publish it to them is their mother Sempien Mathavi. I should not say it even if I know something, said Anuradhar. At this time there was another noise of commotion at the door of the house. The Prime Minister looked up. Aha! Here comes your mother! said. For a while, Sempien Mathavi came upstairs after talking to the ladies of Anuradhar's house. The goddess's face was full of sadness at that time. 
Devi sat in the asana pointed out by Anuradha. He looked down at the ground for a while. There was silence in the attic, outside the mansion and on the street. Then Sembian Mathavi looked at Madhurandha and Anuradha once and said, Sir! My husband put this burden on my head and got up. It was me who did the mistake. But if he had been there, I would not have had to suffer so much. Then Madhurandhagan got angry in his eyes and said, Why are you in such pain? Why do you often take my father's name? I am sure that I am going to ascend the Tanjavur throne. One of the people who stood in the way of that has died. Aromas Hivarman is younger than me. They will never give him a title while I am alive. Only you will stand in my way. You have to be merciful without mercy. Mother! Has anyone ever heard of a mother who betrays her child? Why are you, a devotee of Shiva, trying to betray me? He said. My child! It is a terrible treachery for a child to be against its mother. But my husband has commanded me to do so. It is my duty to carry out his command. I tell you. Manasa is very evil. The desire for a kingdom is worse than that. There is no one in this world who is so anxious as those who wear crowns on their heads. In Singh Adana there is no one who is as restless and embarrassed as those who are at home. Was it not because of the crown on his head that Veerapandian died? How much greater is the kingdom of Shiva than the kingdom of the world? Let us leave this town. Let's visit Kshetra and go to Kailangirai. We will be worthy of the mercy of Sakshad Kailasanathar. Aha! It is the proper season for going on the Kailasayatra. I am not ready yet. I do not see any of the pleasures of this world. You have brought me up to wander about like a madman eating ashes and chanting Shiva Siva. By the great mercy of that Supreme Lord, the kingdom has now come near to me. Why should I give it up? Madhurandhagan asked. Father! The kingdom that has come near you has come with so many dangers. You have removed an obstacle to the ascension of Singh Gadanam. You said that Aditha Kari Kalan is dead. Did you not hear the shouts of the people who were standing around this house just before? Madhuran Thaka. People think that you and the Palyavatarais are responsible for the death of Aditha Kari Kalan. How will they acknowledge you as emperor? Mother, the people will forget all that very soon. If they put me on the throne, they will acknowledge me as the emperor. I will tell you more. Do you know who caused Karakalan's death? It was Vandiyathevan, a great friend of Aromas Hivarmar. It was Vandiyathevan who was in Sambuvarayar's house where Karakalan was lying dead. Aromas Hivarman is the one who arranged to kill Tamayan in order to get the throne for himself. Let this only be known to the people, then we will see what happens to the fate of Pani's silver. Sembian Mathavi threw coals in her eyes and said, Sinner! What do you say about the grace of grace? He is ready to worship a greedy person like you in the temple. If you say this about him again, you will go to the burning hell. You will not have salvation in this world or the next. On hearing this, Madhurandhagan jumped up. Madhurandhagan said, O demon! You curse your own son. You bless my enemy. Can you be my mother? Not at all, said Madhurandhagan. Then Sembian Mathavi said, Father! I had never told you this. You made me say it because of your stubbornness. You are not really my mother who gave birth to you. You are not my son either. Madhurandhagan said in a sweet voice, Ah, what I suspected has come true. If you are not my mother, who is my mother? If I am not your son, then whose son? He said. Devi Muthan Mantri looked at Anuradha and said, Sir! Tell me! Please don't make me tell my shame! The Prime Minister Anuradha looked at Madhurandhagan and said, Prince! You have made the mother who raised you from infancy to look down upon you. Anyway, one day you must know the truth. Know it now! Sembian Mathavi had a desire to have a child in her womb on her newly married day and the child would become the emperor of the Chola Empire. While she was pregnant and expecting a child, her husband was away. At the same time, 
two mute women, an elder sister and a younger brother, lived in the palace garden. One of them got pregnant and was expecting a baby. Sembian Mathavi had brought the pregnant woman who was found orphaned while visiting Kshetradanam. She had heard that her sister was near Tanjavur and was calling her to help the pregnant woman. A child was born to Sembian Mathavi. Prime Minister Anuradhar came to congratulate the kingdom on the birth of a child. Then Sembian Mathavi burst into tears and cried go. And so she mourned as the newborn child lay lifeless like a motionless log. Sir! What shall I answer when my husband comes and asks? She exclaimed. Unable to bear seeing her distress, Anuradha came up with an idea. He knew that the mute woman who lived in the garden had given birth to twins, a boy and a girl. Sadale informed that if he goes to the mute woman and leaves the children there, they will grow up in the palace. The dumb girl looked like a raving lunatic. At first she refused to give up the children. After some time she ran away leaving the children. Immediately Anuradha made her younger sister bring the baby boy to Sembian Mathavi. He took the child, who looked like a lifeless tree, without anyone knowing, and sent him to his mute sister to be buried. The child's transformation in this way kept stirring in the soul of champion Mathavi. One day she confessed the truth to God. The sage said, There is no harm in that. Woman! What if it is a child born in the womb? It is a child given by Lord Shiva. Bring it up like a child born in your womb. But a child born in another clan should not climb the Chola Singh Gadana. Doing so is a betrayal of the clan. So let us raise him to be a devotee of Shiva from an early age. We don't want a Chola empire. A Shiv Bhakti empire is enough. Let us bring him up to say. But we must not be complicit in putting him on the Tanjavur statue for any reason. Even if I am not alive when that opportunity comes, you must be firm and save the Chola clan. Maduran Thaka. You are not the son of a god you have not seen. You are not a child born in the womb of Sembian Mathavi. You are the son of an orphan and mute woman who wandered around the village. You were raised by this goddess who praised you a hundred times more than her own child. Now do not go against her advice. Listen to what the goddess says, and it will be good for you," said Anuradhar.